Howdy, folks. It's Alfonso Rachel filling in for Bill Whittle. Hey, wait, wait, come back. Where are you going? Oh, man. <laughs> Lee, Lee Scott Odd and Steve Green. Steve Green, I hope you guys will hang in there with me, despite the fact that I'm going to be talking about um, vasectomies. They're, they're strapped into their chair. They ain't going nowhere. They're, 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 they're Velcroed into their chairs. And right on, y'all. Welcome to uh, Right Angle. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Guys, I saw this... Um, I saw this article from, I believe it's MSN, MSN News. I know, what was I doing there, right? It, it happens. Uh, and it says men across America are getting uh, vasectomies as an act of love. Man, doesn't that sound Christmassy? Um, so hmm. I saw, uh, and, and in it, as I guess Andy, Gr- Andy Gress, he says, um, I wanted to man up. <laughs> I can't. It's kind of hard to imagine him doing that, like with like a manly voice. But it's like I wanted to. Man, I wanted him to man up. And, and I'll, my take on that is: uh, so your your idea of of manning up is is by reworking your plumbing. Uh, he, he goes on to say. He goes on to say. Uh, I've seen the miracle of life. I'm not sure if you really believe it's a miracle, but uh, he said. But I've also seen kids who are born into poverty and misery and don't have a fair shot. Uh, and, and by the way, when people use that as a justification to uh, abort their kids, that's profiling. It's like, okay, well, this kid's gonna be born poor. Um, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna have the kid put to death. Uh, even though that they like to throw that thing in our face. So what about, you know, give us your tired, your poor and your huddled masses and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, they seem rather inconsistent about those things. Um, so, you know, we're trying to get them un- to understand that it's, it's, it's not about what this person does with their body. You know, it's if it, 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 trying to find like some sort of equivalence here, because it, look, if a man wants to do that to their body, that's their business, you know, and, and whatnot. It's not an equivalent to a woman because when a woman has an abortion, it's not to her body. She's doing it. She's doing it to somebody else's body. And I'm not sure if they really understand the science here, despite being the, you know, the pro science community that they, they claim to be. Uh, and, and there's this, no matter what, you know, if they want to th- toss around the birthing person thing, a man can't carry a kid. So it's just not doing the same thing, no matter how much they try to imagine that the same way that they imagine that a prenatal kid isn't human. Uh, so let us hear a uh, manly perspective by the beard of Scott. And, and, and again, I'm not making any judgments about a man having a vasectomy. No. And if it emasculates from anything, that's not that's not what I'm saying. My concern is that things like this in the culture that are, you know, folks are given over to believing um are demonstrations of of man standards you know and and what do you say scott to uh these things being promoted as man standards well the the guy who said he wanted to man up it it i i'm not sure i buy this man up talk in fact i'm pretty sure that the way he said it was i wanted to man up Mm -hmm. I think there was up talk involved in that phrase. <laughs> I think, um, you know, it it sounds uh, like he's being virtuous, but mm-hmm. what he's really saying when he says there are too many kids born into poverty is, if I fathered a child, I would let him grow up in poverty. Uh, you know, what what does that have to do with anything? It's like he is preventing poverty in a future child because he would not support that child. He would not work to <laughs> to, uh, to raise that child up in the way that he should outside of poverty and government dependency. Uh, nothing about this really makes a whole lot of sense. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it goes without saying uh, that, you know, hey, it, it's your body. Do what you will to it. Um, if you're asking my advice, I say that's a pretty poor excuse to have have such a serious procedure done. On the other hand, if you have this kind of viewpoint, it's probably better for all of us that you're not able to reproduce. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Uh, Steve, this is, I mean, I take this as, as, as rhetoric, you know, it's a rhetoric circus around, around the Roe v. Wade uh, decision, since that's kind of like uh, what's on the table. And, um, yeah. and, and for so long, I've heard people say, you know, things like this should be decided in the States anyway, um, which, which I totally, uh, d- whether it's going to be, because this is coming towards this whole vasectomy thing, but, but I totally agree with this because, I mean, I totally disagree with this because no court is supposed to waste their time hearing a case on on if it's okay to violate uh, the supreme law of the land. 
you know, which says that you can't deprive a person of their life, liberty or property without due process law. I know people talk about, you know, this is supposed to defer to the states and stuff like that. No, this is pretty clear cut. This is a violation of somebody's God given rights. You can't just say, well, we're a laboratory of states and we can go ahead and experiment with people's rights if we want to. No, you can't do that. You know, so um, it looks and, and why I say this, is because it looks like people are trying to make some sort of equivalent that if a woman can't be allowed to have an abortion, then men should welcome being forced into having a, a vasectomy. So, you know, like I said, Steve, is there an equivalent of a state not allowing a, a mother to cancel her kid and a state making a man cancel his ability to uh, inseminate? Yeah. Uh, oh, government ruins everything at some point along the line. <laughs> um, it, it, you were talking about forced uh, vasectomies, but it's actually not quite a joke. Uh, Pennsylvania state representative, so Scott's old stomping grounds here, uh, Representative Chris Rabb, a Democrat, he introduced what he called parity legislation last fall in response to the Texas abortion law that the Supreme Court just uh, upheld. Um Rav's proposal would require men to get vasectomies after the birth of their third child or when they turn 40, whichever comes first, and it would be enforced by allowing Pennsylvanians to report men who fail to comply. And if you're getting that close to my junk, we're going to have a, 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 a talk. <laughs> uh, if you're checking that out, for a $10,000 bounty, a state bounty for reporting men who haven't had vasectomies. And it's just, it's just like it always comes down to eugenics oh. with these people. Mm. Um, it really does. Uh, but there are a couple of things, a couple other aspects to this that, that really interest me. One, let's say you, you are married, you are 40, you do have two or three kids, and you get a vasectomy because you don't want any more kids and uh, your wife doesn't want to be on the pill anymore because, you know, that can have ill effects and all that. Okay, fine, do that. I understand you're being responsible. Going in public to crow about getting a vasectomy is something yeah. very different. You're not emasculated. All your hormones are still there and they're still pumping around your system and all that. But you're almost publicly emasculating yourself by saying, um, even if I wanted to, I could no longer uh, have children and, and start a new family should something happen with my current family. Or it, it's like something you would slap on your Ashley Madison profile. Hey, ladies, I'm fixed. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Heavy. And, OK, you know, folks, 2020, 2021, uh, I, it's, as, as we come to the close of 2020, 2021, uh, it almost seems like 2020 never stopped. It seems like 2020 has just been one whole long year. And, you know, coming into 2020, I'm thinking, hey, you know, 2020, 2020 vision, maybe even some 2020 hindsight vision. Can we put that into play? And it, more and more, it seems like the vision is getting more blurry. And our people are blurring the lines between things, you know, blurring the lines between even this, trying to draw an equivalency of a, of a man having a vasectomy, you know, and, and, and a woman um, not being allowed to um, cancel her pregnancy. I mean, in this cancel culture that we have. And uh, I would hope going forward that folks can understand that you don't want to sue the public for uh, the right to intrude on somebody else's rights, you know, uh, and, and, ca and calling it reproductive rights or even calling it health care or calling it manhood or calling it whatever it is that you think that makes you feel good to be able to intrude on somebody else's rights, calling it fairness while you're actually being unfair to people. So, you know, I, I hope that at some point, you know, we coming past 20, you know, 20, maybe it'll come in. It'll set in a little bit later where we do have some 2020 vision going forward and, and looking looking back. So don't we repeat these same things over and over again. So uh, that being said, I mean, in this in this new year season, y'all have a great new year. This is Alfonso sitting in for uh, Bill Whittle with my friend Scott Ott, Steve Green. Blessings, y'all. We'll see you again soon.